Good afternoon, viewers, and welcome to today's edition of the Sport Rep Show. My name is Limba Mupetami. Now, every Thursday's uh, show looks at uh, some of the some of the stories that we have covered over the week, as well as what you can expect over the weekend. Now, before we get into detail with the stories that we have covered today, um, this morning, Christine Boma and Beatrice Masalingi, of course, ten sensations, the Star Trek athletes of Namibia received two queen-size beds from Nictus for their exploits, of course, on the track and field. Now, they were invited to Nictus this morning to pick up their beds and also had a chance to perform a short sprint, rather, against the CEO of Nictus, and that is Frances Val. Now, we got some footage of that which happened at Nictus today, so have a look at this. <laughs> Tell us how do you feel about the race? <laughs> it was fun. It was fun, yeah. eh? We know you guys are not It was fun. The CEO, how Exciting. was the race? It was good. How did they do? Loved it. No, they loved performed it. well. Uh, I felt that they kept back a little bit, but uh, next year I, I can I'll see you got it, eh? You should join the <laughs> Olympic team. <laughs> Pietras, how yeah. was it running with the CEO? It was awesome. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. Very talented, easy. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. Well, uh, as you can see, the you know just uh, pleasant to see the two athletes just uh, enjoying themselves as they are on, on on a, on holiday, on a break from the athletic season, and uh, with them heading into training that, of course, will be next month, uh, just starting to prepare for the upcoming season. Now, getting into detail with what we have covered in today's edition of the Namibian Sun, let's have a look at today's sport pages. World Cup, a far-fetched dream for Namibia. That is the back page story of today. And on the inside, of course, uh, Hondura guns for, for gold uh, with the upcoming Hockey World Cup. Now getting into detail with the headline story of today. The World Cup dream of Namibia is rather a far-fetched dream. Now, in order to ever qualify for the fo football World Cup, the whole leadership structure of Namibia, as well as the infrastructure need a complete overhaul, said some experts that Namibian Sun spoke to. Now, Namibia's miserable performance in Group H of the 2022 World Cup qualifiers has left many frustrated, with many pointing fingers at the football leadership as well as the structures and non-existent plans to make any impactful uh, stance in football internationally. Now, some of the sentiments that are coming through were, of course, from former footballers as well as former coaches in the likes of Ronnie Cananello, uh, Colin Benjamin, and uh, outspoken Woody Jacobs. Now, these remarks, in a nutshell, come right after the Warriors miserably failed to make any sort of impact, uh, falling 4-0 in the first leg that they played against Senegal, and uh, also again faltering 3-1 in the, in the second uh, leg against Senegal. And with that, of course, throwing away their chances of qualifying with two matches left against to Togo and Congo. Now, Namibia has uh, never made any uh, advances or have never reached the shores of the World Cup stage. The highest competition that the Warriors have ever played has been the Africa Cup of Nations and that was in 1998, 2010 and in 2019 with Ricardo Manetti. Now after speaking with some of these uh, former coaches and uh, former footballers, one of the highlights or rather what I could pick up or pick out from some of these conversations was that of Ronnie Cananello where he said that Namibia needs proper structures and football concepts. Uh, Ronnie highlighted that people who know what real footballers are need to be hired and uh, of course stepping stones need to be laid out to reach the final destination. Now just to read the complete story you can buy today's Namibian Sun and uh, of course just go through that story at the back that is now, moving onwards, um, yesterday there was a press conference at the Namibia Sports Commission in Vintuk with Erin Handura, the Namibia women's hockey team coach, saying and rather warning 
that they don't want any interference as the team prepares for Belgium's World Cup, which of course will take place in February. Now, at a press conference, as I've said, he has warned uh, those who intend on interfering in the team. And uh, just to show you footage of what happened at the press conference, have a look at this. Right. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, CA, Mr. Simata, Mr. Craig, and uh, executive members of the Namibian Hockey Union, members of the media, NSC executives, other members, and team executives or officials and athletes. Yeah, uh, it has been a long way for our preparation for this event. At times, we didn't know whether this World Cup would take place because it was postponed. Initially, the Indoor World Cup was scheduled for this year in February 2021. So it was moved to COVID-19, was moved to 2022. Still, we didn't know whether it was going to take place. Even if we can qualify, we were not quite certain. But eventually, when it happened, we were actually ready. Our preparation started actually in 2019, in October. That's how long it went back to prepare, just to qualify in April of this year. So it takes lots of resources, lots of energy out of the officials, the coaches, the players, but we were fortunate to have partners, our sponsors. So without them, that would have never been possible. Without our main sponsor, MTC, and our co-sponsors, Standard Bank and NEMDIA. So those three sponsors really ca carried us over the past three years. And they believed in us. And now we are going to the World Cup. And they are still standing by our side. So I think not in the so far distant future, we'll be able to announce and launch our sponsors for the World Cup. But I'm thankful to the players for the hard work, dedication. You must remember our players are not like in football where if you're in a training camp, you get paid. So our players have to use their own resources. So it's only now when we go to the World Cup where players are getting incentives. And even those in incentives, we have to make sure to bring them closer. If they're not even half or close to what rugby, cricket, and football athletes are getting. But yet, from my own experience, we are the best team sport in the country. Because we went to the World Cup, previous World Cup 2018, we played six games, we won two, drawn two, and we lost two. So we set the bar very high. Going to this World Cup, we have to do better than that. The players know we have all the pressure on us, and it can be done. So our aim is to make sure we finish in the top six. We don't want just top six, we, want, we are going for the top prize. Because you only shoot at what you are aiming at. So we go for the top prize, we want the gold medal. So if you miss the gold, at least you can get silver or bronze. But if you go for six, because last time we wanted to finish eight, and we missed by one spot in a game against Russia that we were supposed to win. And we drew that game 5-5. Five, five. So now we are aiming very high so we can get a better result. Because if you finish in the top six, you qualify automatically for the next World Cup. You don't have to even play in the continental qualifiers, which is Africa Cup of Nations. So I think those are what we are looking at. And our group is actually quite interesting because we have Austria, which is a team that we can actually beat. We play our first game against Austria, and then we play, play Belarus. The top two teams in that group is Holland, who's ranked second, and Belarus ranked third in the world. So Belarus is not an easy team because last year the European Championship, they beat both the number one Germany and they also beat Holland. So they are basically the top European team. That's why we will be going earlier to the European Championship, which is taking place from the 12th to the 15th of January in Hamburg. So we are going there. We were probably also going to play one or two matches against those European teams that are not in our pool, the likes of Ukraine. We already made contact with them so that we can analyze them and watch them. Our players will all be there.
Yes, of course, uh, Erwin Handura just saying that they are focused on preparations for the World Cup. That, of course, is the Hockey World Cup, and uh, they do not want any type of interference as well. Now, moving into football news, on Saturday, there will be football action in Khobabes, and that, of course, is the MTC NFA Cup away semifinals. Uh, Blue Waters will face Civics at 2 o'clock, whereas Mighty Gunners will go up against uh, home favorites, and that is Young African, that match taking place right after the Blue Waters versus Civics clash. Now, here is what Blue Waters coach Paolo Shipanga had to say ahead of his side's clash with Civics. Yes, good morning. Um, yo, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday. A tough game, very tough game, uh, Civics being you know one of those teams that are very tricky you don't know what they bring to the table but the good part is they they, they are footballers and they will play football um, they're not much of a riding team i think they're more of a passing team uh, from my side you know as blue waters we are we are there we are ready you know it will be a journey it will be history in the making for us you know haven't played a semi-final or a final for a long time final being at the coast will also be one of those you know um, historical moments that we want to achieve and uh, we pray and we hope for the best of the game but um, you know I know at the end of the day my boys will come through for us they know the importance of the game they know what's at stake they know that we have to win this no matter what it's a cup game you know you score you win you defend um, all those things we've captured them we have we have trained them and yeah we hope nothing but the best for Saturday and let the victory be in Blue Water's name. Paolo Shipanga quite confident that uh, his side will get the final spot uh, in the MTC NFA Cup away. Now, also again on Saturday, there will be boxing action at the Vintu Country Club, and that is with the MTC Nesta Sunshine Tobias Boxing Academy hosting the Together as One Boxing Bonanza. Now, highlighting the event is a rematch between Anthony uh, Jarman and uh, Paulinus Njolunemus. Of course, uh, there are also 14 other bouts lined up for the night at the Vindu Country Club. Uh, the likes of Philippus Energy Igetumbwa who will also go up against Innocent Mantengu. Now, Energy is one of Namibia's emerging super bandom weights. And uh, of course, uh, over the, uh, the year, he has quite become one of those uh, boxers that the fans uh, like to see. Now, with that, uh, let's just have a look at uh, video footage of Energy's previous fight. <laughs> Now, of course, if you'd like to watch that uh, fight, uh, fighting Bonanza on Saturday at the Vintu Country Club, please do make sure that you buy your tickets early. You still have today and tomorrow as well. And uh, also now with uh, football news, uh, on Wednesday, Peter Sharulile and Dion Hotto raked in accolades in South Africa. Uh, Sharulile was named DSTV Premiership Player of the Month for August, September. Apart from scoring five goals in six games, Shalulile has been helping in defense and was acknowledged for that, uh, for that as well. Now, Hoto, on the other hand, received the DSTV Premiership Goal of the Month for August, September for a stunning 30 meters free kick against Stellenbosch. Now, congratulations to those players as well. And of course, with Peter Shalulile also being nominated in the Namibia Annual Sports uh, Awards that is coming up uh, in the category of the uh, best sportsman in diaspora. Of course, also with uh, some other local sporting news, and that, of course, is netball with the Coma Super 10 uh, again continuing over the weekend. Now, the sub Super 10, uh, 10 log uh, leaders are Afrocat Lions as they are in prime position to be crowned netball champions. However, they need to win their last two weekend games on Saturday. And, uh, of course, that is against Tigers. And um, 
uh, that is against against Tigers that is as they lead with six, six, uh, 36 points and uh, also Wanderers will play um, uh, a match on Saturday and that will be against uh, against uh, Tigers as well Tigers the second team now the new season of the futsal Namibia league will kick off um, tomorrow now this will be at the Vinduk showgrounds as well for futs uh, futsal lovers now there will be 30 teams 10 bet category in the first division and that is the under 17s and the ladies teams as well now also just to mention the brave gladiators of Namibia are training at Nelson Mandela University High Performance in South Africa. This is, of course, ahead of the African Women Cup of Nations first leg qualifier clash against Tanzania on the 20th of October. Now, the players are very much focused on doing focused speed reaction training, stabilization training, as well as core strengthening. Now, with that, let's have a quick look at some footage also of the players just training in, in the gym. Yes, of course, the ladies just uh, getting ready for that clash against Tanzania. Now, talking about the Namibia Annual Sports Expo, uh, of course, uh, some of the clips uh, with interviews that we have done will be flowing again on uh, starting on Monday. And that is the Namibia Hockey Union, uh, the Regan Greg, the president, uh, talking about uh, just some of the things that the Federation is uh, busy with. Uh, that will be on Monday. And then on the 12th, we have Cricket Namibia, Joanne Muller, the CEO and Operations Manager, um, interview coming through there as well. As well as on the 13th of October, the Namibia Power Lifting and Weight Lifting Federation. Uh, on the 14th, we have Netball Namibia, and that will be Imelda Nerongo. On the 15th, we have the Namibia Fencing Federation. On the 18th of October, or rather on the 16th of October, we have the Namibia Cycling Federation interview flowing, and that is with Mr. Isel Tyson, uh, of course the president and the Olympian cyclist. And on the 17th, we will end with Namibia Canoe and Rowing Federation, Michael Himbody, which is of course the president. Now that is the Namibia Annual Sports Expo. You can expect to just catch uh, the interviews on uh, Namibian Sun or rather on Namibian uh, on the Sport Rep uh, uh, Facebook page. That is uh, the good thing about that is you can always just go back and uh, uh, watch an uh, interview that you have missed. Now, um, talking about the World Cup, the Cricket World Cup is also starting on Monday. Uh, the, the cricket senior side uh, is done warming up with they're done with warm up games that they have been playing and um, Monday they're going to face Sri Lanka uh, it's going to be a very tough tough match for Namibia as well of course this will determine how they're going to um, far in the in the in the competition now in the in the second match they will face the Netherlands and that will be on the 20th of October and then on the 22nd they will face Ireland now, uh, we spoke to Pierre de Brain, uh, the coach of the team, and uh, after the loss, the friendly loss that they had against Oman, this is just uh, his thoughts on the, com on the upcoming competition. So have a look at this footage. Well, yeah, yesterday's game against Oman um, was a typical warm-up game. Um, the opportunity to not just play 11 players, but to play all 15 um, and get, get all of them involved in the game in uh, preparation and, and especially in their roles. So um, it was a great exercise for us. It was under lights, um, which we haven't played under lights, well, for the last two years. Um, and, um, and it was a tricky wicket to chase on. So it was a, it's a very good exercise for us. I know the result didn't go our way, but 
that for us wasn't really the the focus point. The focus point for us was to see and to get ourselves familiar with um, with floodlights. Um, you know, it's it's a completely different for for batters, especially facing bowlers under lights. Um, so a good exercise for us. We've got uh, two more practices under lights before Monday night against Sri Lanka, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, in terms of you know, Monday, Sri Lanka, yeah, um, there's no doubt that um, everyone's getting excited and, and excitement comes with a little bit of nerves, I suppose. But that's normal. Um, nerves, um, you know, will create some adrenaline. And um, we we are just going to focus on, on how we're going to play. We've got a We've got a game plan that we're going to back against Sri Lanka um, to give ourselves the best chance to beat them. Uh, and I think the most important thing that we're working on uh, is, um, is is from a mental point of view and how we're going to approach that game. You know, it's it's against a full full test nation. We know Sri Lanka is a very good side. They've won a World Cup before. Um, uh, they know how to feel. They know how to operate on the big stage. Um, uh, they, they might see us as uh, underdogs, um, but I'm sure a coach like Mickey Arthur will not be complacent at all. But I, did, I do feel that we've got a very good chance against them um, under lights on a wicket in Abu Dhabi, which is going to be very good. Um, there's no real turn there. Um, so I think the, the, the conditions will suit us. Um, it's just going to be a matter of how we're going to uh, handle a, a high pressure situations within the game and and how we're going to get through them and how we're going to keep on wrestling in in those situations and we are certainly not going to die wondering we are not going to back away or sit back we are not going to get bullied we are going to we're going into that game um with with everything that we have you know we've waited not just two years to, to, to get this World Cup started, but we've waited 18 years since the last World Cup. You know, we've, we've waited for the first ever T20 World Cup. So there's no time or room now to sit back and get too nervous or stressed or anxious about a cricket game. We've done everything in our capability to prepare. Um, so whatever the outcome is Monday night, we know that we are well prepared. And um, we are going out there to enjoy that moment, to represent the country with pride, with courage, um, and to inspire everyone back home. Well, of course, the Cricket World Cup starting on Monday, quite excited uh, cricket fans out there as well. Now, uh, before we move into Spotify, uh, there's a competition that uh, Namibia Media Holdings is running and that, of course, is the uh, with just some information uh, that we'd like to give to the readers and the viewers. So that is, please buy the Namibian Sun, the Rapply Kane and the AZ that is on Monday and get the tell and tech focus insight. Now, in the papers, you'll find an ad with a QR code, scan it and fill in an online quiz. Now, you will need the tell and tech focus to answer questions. If you get all the questions correctly, you stand a chance to, uh, to be entered into a draw for prices. And the prices, of course, includes a uh, People PC and Echo Robotics 3D printer. So please do make sure that you buy the pages on Monday to get the tell and tech focus inside. Now with that, uh, we're going to take a short break, a very short break. And then once we get back, we get straight into Spotify. And that is with Rivaldo Cavanga.
Well, yes, welcome back to another rejuvenated segment of Spotify. My name is Rivaldo Cavanga and I'll be taking you through the show today. We're exciting sports action during the week and we can't wait to dive in on what has happened during this week and what we ought to see during the weekend. Firstly, the inter-high school competition between Windhoek High School and Windhoek Gymnasium are well underway. The sporting activities between the two schools have promised to deliver and indeed already fulfilling that promise. We had a marvelous triathlon competition between the two schools and also an amazing game of table tennis. Stay tuned as we watch the following footage of how the day went as well as a short interview with one of the table tennis players. My name is Ruben now. I just play the table tennis in the inter-high. Um, I'm from Winter Gymnasium. I feel the inter-high is quite important because it's a highlight in our school career. Um, I think it's very fun. I just, I just lost my match but I enjoyed it a lot. So yeah. Amazing action already displayed from the two schools thus far. We look forward to some action as the schools go head to head at the archery this afternoon at 1530, which will be broadcasted live on my zone's Facebook and YouTube pages. We will also be seeing some exciting cricket action today. We look forward to a loud and exciting big brag on Friday and as well as some vigorous hockey matches. On Saturday, we witness electric and energetic netball and rugby on all my zone's Facebook pages and as well as the sports rap page. Moving on in the current latest news, the Ochoarongo Secondary School netball team defeated Etosha Secondary School 19-8 in their Classic Clash netball match yesterday. In, and in other news, in tennis news, our Namibian under 12 boys and girls brought the fight to Botswana and won 3-0. That is in the girls category. The girls won their singles matches as well as their doubles. The boys won one single match and the doubles match defeating Botswana 2-1. Today the boys are playing against Zimbabwe, which the coach described as a much tougher match. Still focusing on the under-12 tennis team, the Frank Fredericks Foundation announced on the 12th October that they have once again come on board for Joannivia Baserenhout, who received an amount of $10,000 sponsorship to represent Namibia in tennis competitions taking place in Bulwayo, Zimbabwe. Jandre Basedanov, Joaniva's representative and father, approached the foundation requesting sponsorship for Joaniva to compete in the ITF slash CAT Southern Africa Junior, Junior Tennis Competitions and the 12th competition, as well as the ITF slash CAT African Junior and the 14th circuit in Bulwayo, Zimbabwe from October 12th to the 16th of October 2021. The foundation agreed to sponsor her with $10,000 Namibian dollars, which she used for preparation and national attire. We are very proud of Joaniva and her accomplishments to date. 
She has been an excellent representative of the foundation and has grown tremendously in her abilities. We wish all the best of luck in her upcoming tournaments and will be rooting for her, said Frank Fredericks, the founder of the Frank Fredericks Foundation. Quite a, look, uh, quite a lot to look at during this weekend as we see the Inter High take place. Stay tuned for the following ads to see what will be happening during the weekend before we go back to Limba in the other studio. Succeed with PST Bit. So, where were we? PST Bit. You play, we pay. Not for persons under the age of 18. Yes, of course. Thank you so much, Rivaldo. Now, a segment sponsor on this show, and that is PST Bed. Every week, pick someone in need and donates money to help with uh, their struggle or rather their plight. Now, if you're in need or know somebody who might need help, email them on csr at psdbed.com detailing your struggle. Now, uh, of course, uh, this information is also available in the post if you just check up there in the caption post as well uh, if you're struggling with the email address. Now, just worth mentioning also is the fact that PST Bed sponsors Civics which will be playing on Saturday in the MTC uh, NFA Away Cup. Just worth mentioning as well. And uh, with that, we've come to the end of today's show. And of course, uh, again, join us on Monday as we bring you a fresh edition of the Sport Rep Show, which will, of course, look at some of the events that will be taking place over the weekend. So uh, that is all from here, from us here at the Sport Rep Show. Catch us again on Monday. <music>